me just read a scripture to you. John 9, John 15, 9 through 17. As my father has loved me, so I have loved you. Praise God. Isn't that good? Now remain in my love. So love is not just a one-time thing. God wants us to remain in his love. He wants us like James said, go from glory to glory. Patricia said, go from glory to glory. We need to go from, don't, if we're going to go from faith to faith, right? If we're going to go from glory to glory, right? Well, shouldn't we go love to love? Shouldn't we go love to love? Helena's saying yes. Emmy's saying yes. Ellie's saying yes. And um, Susan's playing with her playing with her notepad. <laughs> I'm just teasing her. <laughs> She's writing down notes. <laughs> so we're all having fun, praise God. So I'll read the scripture to you again. John 15, 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. You don't have to get, you don't have to get, I'm going to give you my notes, so don't worry about it. Okay. As Father has given me, so loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. So he tells us to remain in his love, and then he tells us how to do it. Just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. So Jesus tells us that he wants, that, that God loves them. Jesus tells the people that he loves them. He tells people that he wants them to remain in his love. He tells them how to do it by keeping his father's commands and remaining in his love. He has told you all of this. He said, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Can you love like Jesus loved? He would have told you to do it unless you could. So he wants you to love like he loves. And how do we love? Unconditionally love people. No matter what they do, they can step on my feet and, and slap me in the face, but I'm going to love them. Praise God, I'm going to love them. That's never happened to me, but if it does, I'll love them anyways. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. Listen to this. Isn't this great? I no longer call you servants. Because a servant does not know his master's business. Jesus has told us his business. Jesus never said, get out of my business. <laughs> Jesus said, I, you know, I want you to know my business. So he no longer calls you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. We're friends of God because God loves us. We're children of God because God loves us. For everything I have learned from my Father, I have made known unto you. Isn't that exciting? There's no God's not holding anything back from us. He's not keeping secrets from us. He wants us to know him. And how does he want us to know him? Through the love that Jesus showed us in the Gospels. In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we just see again and again the love that Jesus had. Susan and I were talking before the service, and I was just saying, and also was talking about it during Arub, is that God treats us like we're his children, just like Arub is, is working with the children, just like Pastor Mang is working with the children. They're showing love towards those people. Scott, by going out on the streets with the cross and carrying the cross and drag, and not dragging, but letting the cross roll behind him when he's going out to the streets and he's praying for people. What is he doing? Is he pointing his finger at people and saying, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, you're a sinner. You need to go, you need to get saved. You're going to go to hell. You're a sinner. No, Scott's going around and saying, can I pray for you? Anything that you need. Do you need, do you need, do you need prayer? Do you need love? Whatever you need, God is going to work through Scott because Scott has a heart of love and he's going to work through that heart of love to bless people because love never fails. Love is attractive. Love is, is like a magnet. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 4 says this. God's banner over me is faith. Right? God's banner over me is love. So that's his banner over me. Psalms 136, 26 says this. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. Deuteronomy 7 and 9. Know, therefore, that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God. And what does he do? Being faithful, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those that love him and keep his commandments. God's not changing. Isn't that exciting? A thousand. Think about that. 
a thousand generations. That's just not one generation or two generations or three generations. A thousand generations, the Lord God is going to keep that covenant of love. So what are we going to do in our future? What is our future in heaven going to be like? Well, in heaven for thousands of generations, God is going to love us and keep his covenant of love with us. And because we love him and we're keeping his commandments. So God's got his part to play. He loves us. And we've got our part to play. We love God and we do his commandments. It's easy. It's very easy. Jesus gives us a command of love in 1 John 4, 18. He doesn't actually say this, but he gives us a command in 1 John 4, 1 and 8. There is no fear in love. This is by John. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Listen, if you want to have a peaceful life, if you want to have a life full of joy, always focus on the love. Because the love is where it is. That's the, that's the center of the cherry. That's the little cherry in the middle and the, the fruits in the middle, that little nut in the middle of the cherry. That's, the, that's the, the core to everything. Just radiate through love, radiate through love, radiate through love, and you'll, be, and you'll be doing what God's called you to do. Praise God. We do not see God, but we yet love him because we see his love working every day. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were yet sinners. Give you a lot of scriptures. Look at this wonderful scripture, Romans 8, 7, 37 through 39. Yet in all these things, what are we going through in life? We are more than conquerors to him who loved us. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor plane flights to Japan, nor things present, nor things to come, no Scott dragging the cross around the cities or going to different churches and, and giving a testimony to his power, of God's power, nor height, nor depth, or Margaret doing her wonderful stuff that she's doing down in Los Angeles, the wonderful stuff she's doing with hospitals, nor any other created thing, or Jill praying, and Jill's a powerful prayer warrior. When she prays, things happen. Then for Emanuelita, that Emanuelita's now praising the Lord with both of her arms because she's been She's being delivered from sickness and disease and pain and suffering and all the other things that having that elbow problem caused. None of those things shall separate them and us from the love of God who is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons can separate us from God's love. No power above or in the earth can separate us from God's love. 1 John 3, 1 says this. Behold. What manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, praise God, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it does not know him. Praise God. So I'll finish up right now with, this, with a quick story that I want to tell you from Brother Hagen. Brother Hagen has had a wife. Her name was Aretha. And they were married for about 70 years. Well, Aretha had gotten sick several times while she was married to Kenneth Hagen and Kenneth Hagen would stand in the gap for her for um, healing. And she was able to receive healing several times, but she'd gotten a goiter on her neck, a big goiter on her neck. And it was small and they prayed about it and the goiter didn't go away. The goiter just kept getting bigger and bigger. And the Lord's and brother Hagen was kind of frustrated because everything that he ever prayed for Aretha got go, went away. But this one goiter kept getting bigger and bigger, and it was causing her all kinds of physical problems. And she'd pray for it, and he'd pray for it, and nothing, it would not go away. And so Brother Hagen said that when he was, he would go out on the field and go in the field to do ministries at churches, he'd be away from her. And she'd be at home dealing with this goiter situation on her neck. And he'd be in California, and she'd be in Texas, or he'd be in Washington, and he'd, she'd be in Texas, or he'd be in Florida, and she'd be in Texas. And he said this, he said that when he went away and got into the spirit, when he was preaching his sermons, he said he would be able to tell people what their sickness was and pray for them. Like, you know, you have a headache. Lord shows me you have a headache. Let's pray for that. Lord shows me you have this. I'll pray for that. He said when he got into the spirit with the Holy Spirit, he realized that if his wife had surgery to get rid of the gourd, she would die. She would die. 
and she is getting worse and worse and worse. And she's having trouble breathing because it was like binging on her, her throat. And so he pray about it. He pray about it. Get into the spirit, and he would see for some reason that when he got into the spirit, he would show him that her, her that she should not have surgery. She should have surgery because she wouldn't make it to the surgery. In fact, he went back and talked. They went back and talked to the doctors, and the doctor said, "Aretha, you know, you've got this goiter, but you don't. You're not physically strong enough right now to handle a surgery." And so um, you, we can't do surgery. Can't do surgery. This went on for like so. Well, this went on for several months. So Brother Hagen was in the spirit in, in a meeting in Texas, and he was at a, a he was at a tent meeting. And as he was got down on his knees and he was praying in the spirit, he looked up and he saw Jesus standing in front of him. And Jesus started to speak to him and spoke to him for um, an hour and a half on his ministry. They sat down together and spoke for an hour and a half on his ministry in, in this tent meeting. And they were going over different things, going over different things. And Brother Hagen said, told us, he said, it's the things that are on your heart at the time that are spiritual things that you, when you see the Lord and he wants to talk to you, it's all the things that are in your spirit. He said, when you get, when Jesus left, he said, oh, I had a million things I was thinking about. Why didn't I ask him about those things? Because everything comes out of your heart and the questions that you have out of your heart are the questions that he asks you to do, like this and this and this, and this all the spiritual things. So I'm I told you all that story to tell you this before I close. Jesus walked away, and then he turned around and came back and said, you've been praying about your wife. Brother Hagin said, yeah, you've been praying about your wife. And he, Jesus said, your prayers have come to me, and uh, I know that you're concerned about your wife. He said this. He said, have your wife do the surgery. Because if she does the surgery, she'll live. Praise mm -hmm. God. And, and Jesus turned around just before that. He said, and he said this, he said, no one wants to do more for their children than I do. No one loves their children more than I do. Your prayers brought me here. Your prayers brought the answer that you were seeking. Your main prayer was for your wife and the goiter. So now, be, now I'm here to answer your prayer. Tell your wife to have the surgery. Tell your wife that she will not die and tell your wife that she'll be all right. So all the doctors were scared because the doctors were saying, no, 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 you can't do surgery. We can't do surgery on you. We're going to have to sign all this paperwork because, you know, if something happens in the surgery, you might sue us. Brother Hagen said, don't worry about it. Aretha said, don't worry about it. We're going to go into the surgery. They went into the surgery. She healed twice as fast as a normal human being healed. She got through it. She never had a problem with her goiter anymore. She was completely delivered through the surgery. So you know, I'm not saying, I'm saying all that to say, Jesus told him, no one loves my children more than I do. No one loves and wants my children to be blessed more than I do. Yeah. No, and God loves you more than, do the doctors love you, but the, nobody loves you like Jesus. So that's the end of my, I got more message here. I'm not going to do it. But I went over time. But if you remember anything else from my message today, I want you to remember that story about Kenneth Hagen and his wife. I want you to remember, remember that story about the goiter. I want you to remember that story about Brother Hagen praying and praying and praying for his wife. I want you to remember that story about Jesus appearing to him and turning around and telling him, no one loves my children more than I do. No one wants my children more well more than I do. Remember that. That's what I want you to remember. That's the story I didn't tell last week that I was excited about, but it went on too long. So Father God, let's just pray. Father God, we just love you so much. We've been singing songs to you today. We've been giving testimonies. We've been honoring you. We've been putting you first. We've been thanking you for everything that you're doing in our lives and all the lives of Victory Church. Everyone here has a testimony. Everyone here has a purpose and a plan. Everyone here is going somewhere. Everyone here is doing something. We don't, hear, we don't have people that are just not doing anything. We have people, every single person in this church is learning, is developing, is growing, is changing, is getting stronger, is getting better. They're not, we're not putting doubt into people. We're putting life and love and faith and joy and peace and all the fruits of the spirit of people. So Father God, just like Jesus appeared to Brother Hagen and pointed to him and said, no one loves my children more than I. No one wants to bless their children more than I. I just pray that same blessing of Jesus's lips that came out of his own very own lips. Jesus spoke those very own words. And that's just, and he's not a respecter of persons. So I just pray a blessing over everybody that's listening to this message. No one loves you more than Jesus. No one cares for you more than Jesus. No one has a better future for you than Jesus. No one has planned and built a destiny and a purpose for you more than Jesus. Rest in his arms. Rest in his peace. Rest in his joy. 
As you go to bed at night, remember that Jesus loves you. When you get up in the morning, remember that Jesus loves you. When you're driving in your car, remember that Jesus loves you. Every minute, every second, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year of your life, Jesus' love never changes. It's always the same. It's always there to bless you. It's always there to help you. So I just ask and pray that the revelation of God's love would come to everyone that's listening. And I pray this prayer as I finish. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.